Okay. Okay. Now I'm set. Excellent. Well, hey, Jill, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out for the show. And I want to begin everything in our conversation with living through the last three and a half years, which has been the pandemic. How did you get through it? And how has it changed the way that you do things now? Well, you know, I mean, obviously, it was a terrible thing to happen in our world. And yet in my life, interestingly enough, one of the best things that happened in my business, because the truth is, as a speaker, on the topics of publicity and kindness, I was literally traveling half the month. I was honestly at a bit of state of exhaustion. And I was glad for a moment where I didn't have to travel. And then what I did was I recreated all my programs. So they're completely online now. Nice. So I was traveling to city to city to offer my publicity boot camp. Guess what? I can do this all on Zoom now. We're yeah. getting even more people. I've lowered all my prices. It actually has been a really win-win-win all the way around. So I'm very grateful for that and for the opportunity to serve a lot more people to get publicity and make it happen. And then I also implemented a conscious kindness circle also on Zoom with over a thousand people in this. And and I've I just find I've really been able to reach a lot more people and do the things that serve well and and frankly keep keep the prices very affordable my kindness circle is completely free i mean it's just been great so you, there's obviously a lot of things you do you're an author you're a speaker there's a lot of things that go into that but if i put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day and one of the kids looked up and said hey what do you do for a living how would you answer that child ah so i help people get and gain more publicity which means you get more visible, which means you get more clients, which means you get more attention for what you do. And uh, and that's what I help people do. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? Mm. Well, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, I'm trying to remember, but bottom line, probably a ballerina, if I were to guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, something in the, I always have loved actually dance, entertainment, theater. I love that. So I... Uh, take care of that part of myself by going to a lot of theater and dance and cultural events. So that's always been a part of who I am. So let's go back to where you were born and raised and the seeds that became who you are. How did you get this fascination with writing and speaking and helping others get more visible? So I, I was uh, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. And, and uh, you know, I think honestly, because of the family I came from, which, you know, we all have our family stories, but I found that if I went into, I, I started becoming a leader very young and, and even teaching, my brother is mentally ill. So I would actually help kind of teach him really. And uh, I think that teaching part of me, because that's a lot of what I do with people, meaning I lead, you know, workshops, I speak all over the world. I'm on Zoom a lot speaking and training. Guess what? I think that was born young. Um, particularly from my brother and teaching him and supporting him, uh, that that's where all that started. And that's where the seeds all started. And as far as the, the, the writing, you know, I had a PR business going, PR consulting. I still do that. And frankly, it was just a fabulous way to get in front of people and have them know me. And then when I started speaking, I went, oh, I really like this. I actually am uh, good at it. I've, of course, taken, you know, taken my own trainings to get even better and better in each moment. Um, but I really enjoy it. I really love the connection and it, yeah. it's meaningful for me. So who's been a hero for you, a very influential force in your life to help you become mm. who you are? Ah, oh, you mean not, not a hero that who I watch from external, right? You mean actually in my life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've had, I'm really big on uh, investing in mentors and coaches and, and I think it's really important, just like I am for others, I also uh, do it for myself. So I've had people you may or may not have heard of, uh, Mark LeBlanc, who was mm -hmm. president of the National Speakers Association, an amazing man out of Minnesota, uh, you know, it made such a difference in my life. Um, I had a woman I did some training with that was actually trained by Werner Earhart. So in the personal development world, I was trained by a woman named Patricia McDade. Huge, for seven years, huge difference in my life. Um, I've had just some beautiful, uh, James Malinchuk, who is brilliant. He was on ABC's Secret Millionaire. He's been in my life as a coach and trainer for a long time. Um, and these 
those are some who've made a huge difference from a coaching mentoring perspective. Big difference for me. So what's been the best speech that you've ever seen in your life? Mm. Oh, wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I'd probably go with Martin Luther King. Yeah. I actually bought his uh, DVD and CD because I wanted to see him, study him. And I mean, just his beauty, his naturalness, of course, is is what's so key. But he's he's certainly a an inspiration. So everyone that's alive on the planet right now, if you can meet one person, who would that be? Mm, alive. OK. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll say Oprah Winfrey. OK. Yeah. Well, I want to hang. Well, I want to hang with her. That's right. <laughs> What would you ask? What would be the one thing if you could ask her one thing? What would you like to know? Uh, I want to really know the the secret to um, secret to her uprightness. I mean, the truth is, she took a lot of beatings in different ways and different times, and uh, you know, from all kinds of uh, all kinds of camps. I'll say. And she, you know, did so well, has obviously, you know, created a great wealth and, and making a huge difference in the world uh, with her wealth and with her influence and certainly her show for all those years. Um, but she's still, you know, she's still doing so much. So I want to know the secret to that. Yeah. Even amidst all the tough stuff. So let's get to the secret of you. What's your inspiration? What gets you out of bed every day? What makes you who you are and excel the way you do? Mm, thank you. Well, part of it is making a decision to commit to life. You know, I want to be uh, a light for people, a serve, a servant for people, a contributor for, for this world. And so, you know, in the morning, I, I ask God to help me do this, right, to put the right people in my path to help guide my way. Um, and I have rituals in the morning before I go and teach and do any of my boot camps, I have rituals I do that support a foundation for who I am. And, you know, frankly, a lot of years of personal development training has made a huge difference because I know that even if I'm waking up on the wrong side of the bed, because listen, you know, we're not, every day is not a great day, to be honest, but every day can be a great day if you just decide it is. So, I think that's for me is what I do. I wake up and I say five things I'm grateful for immediately. And I say five things I'm grateful for at night. So I wake up and I go to bed with that in my mind. So what's been the best fan letter, best client response that you've ever gotten that puts a smile on your face? Oh, gosh. And I do keep them on my thank yous. Um, well, one woman is uh, has done a number of works with me and she sent me, I'll show you. <laughs> Look yeah. at this. She sent me stamps they're oh, just cool. fun right yeah and then then she sent me these see where they are they're right at my desk oh yeah smiles yeah, yeah. right <laughs> yeah she sent me these and so um a lot of people ask me for testimonial for their books so what i do is i put the smile yeah. on it and say congratulations and just such a fun little thing and it's sure. it's silly and 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 unique and it's just um, that for me meant a lot. People send me little gifts of acknowledgement and thanks. And it just, it means a lot to me. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into like a 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've lived, the wisdom you've gained. What advice would you give your younger self? I would say get financially literate quicker. Right. For me, that was not uh, an education I had. I came from a, you know, a blue collar family. We never had money. And then all of a sudden to run my own business, um, you know, it's a lot of responsibility as it is. Now, I'm great with marketing and PR. Financial literacy is a whole nother piece. So I think that for me, I would have gotten handled quicker and gotten uh, educated faster. So as a writer, what was the first book you read when you were younger that really made you either want to write someday or read more? Mm, well, I've always been a reader. I've always been a reader. In fact, I'm still a member of a book club in my local neighborhood. So that guarantees I'll read 12 fiction books every year. I love that, you know, um, but I have always been a reader. And Dr. Seuss is one of my favorites. Um, you know, I love the rhyme and the fun and, and uh, that's just super fun for me. But I always have been, so I, my goal is always to read one fiction book and one nonfiction book every single month. That's 24 a year, yeah. um, at least that. And, and I remember as a kid, I particularly loved reading. I think for me, 
I got to go in someone else's world. I loved Judy Bloom, who now is funny enough enjoying this resurgence with yeah. movies and other things that people are putting out about her. But she was really progressive. I didn't. Even, I don't think I even realized how progressive she was at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So of all the things that you've done and accomplished and overcome in your life, what are you the proudest of? Mm. You know, I'm definitely proud of having books. I mean, I've got four books and then I'm featured in lots of other compilation books. But I remember that first time I opened the box for guerrilla publicity and I, we're on our third edition now. Yay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, that, you know, that all takes something. And, yeah. and we sold over 80,000 books and that's using publicity to drive it. Right. But I remember opening that first box and taking out a book and Oh, the feeling of that, the expansion, yeah. the excitement, and then going to my first book signing at Barnes and Noble and seeing my poster in the front of the store. That was a little scary, I might add. Yeah. But, you know, it's just exciting because, you know, you all of a sudden have something that I can leave a legacy, my information, and it can get in people's hands. And that that feels good to me. So if you could witness any event in human history with your own eyes, where would you mm -hmm. love to have been to see? Oh, wow. Well, that's a big one. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there's many I'd change, I'll tell you that much. But uh, <laughs> what would I like to see? Probably um, probably some kind of uh, the monarchy, and particularly maybe in, in China with the yeah. emperors would be interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. So, Jill, everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, readers, fans, clients, colleagues, everybody. But you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Mm, wow. Great questions, by the way. <laughs> um, who do I think I am? I, committed, hardworking, um, focused, caring, uh, heart-centered, um, and and uh, just, you know, get her done kind of woman. So if anyone wants to pick up your books, they want to hire you, learn more about you, reach out to you, where can they go? Where's the best place? Well, check out JillLublin.com. It's terrific. Okay, excellent. Jill, this has been great. Thank you so much for your story. Thank you for your passion. I really appreciate it. And best of luck with everything. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Take care.